The spiritual practice for today, for this session, is, quote, dare to develop personal spiritual truths that can be unassailable from outside forces. So, as we can see, the notion of spiritual truths or spiritual laws or dharma is central to uh, what Sir John is about in this book. And we can see how practical this idea is because it's not just a, a matter of theory, but it's a matter of having what, uh, what Sir John calls a personal list of laws. He suggests that this personal list of laws can actually give us the kind of uh, integrity and self-settled centeredness that can make us really immovable in the face of of uh, life's difficulties and uh, as in the face of the various moral and ethical issues uh, that might uh, might undo us because um, there's there are challenges on all sides and we're continuously being tested that's one of the great insights that can, has come down to us from the prophet Zoroaster or Zarathustra I'll have more to say about him uh, in a later lecture and that is this moral earnestness or moral seriousness. Now, we see that that has come down to us from Judaism through Christianity and Islam, but it also uh, came uh, in India, possibly, scholarship is starting to develop some evidence in this direction, that Zoroaster or Zarathustra perhaps even influenced the moral realism of Buddha with his ethical doctrine, of ethical karma doctrine. But at any rate, how to put this into practice? Well, how do we know what, what our, uh, our own personal spiritual truths can be? How can we do what Sir John suggests when he says, draw up and continually revise a personal list of laws? Well, if I were to make up laws, would they be arbitrary? Would they be fair? Could I just arbitrarily say this will be the case and not, the, not that not the case? No, clearly that's not the kind of arbitrary law that he has in mind. He has in mind dharma, spiritual laws that have stood the test of time. But in order to be aware of these laws, instead of learning them kind of haphazardly and uh, in a hit or miss way, we can, um, we can learn many of them from the spiritual traditions of humanity. We can learn, for instance, many of them by just reading this book. So, uh, John, Sir John writes, what could be more uplifting than for each human to write in his or her mind and heart, as well as on paper, the laws by which he or she ought to live? What if they were to continually write and rewrite these on the basis of their changing experience? Well, how to do this? Well, Sir John recommended keeping a spiritual journal. We begin drawing up our personal list of laws by keeping a spiritual journal. Now, in case too many people start thinking of journal keeping and list keeping figures like Benjamin Franklin and other figures in other cultures, um, this can indeed sound like a rather simple practice. But yet, anyone who's actually kept a spiritual journal over some length of time, will know that the benefit in the journaling isn't perhaps in the pleasure that might arise from rereading it years later. It's that this is a process of introspection that's kind of externalized on paper, or perhaps if you do it uh, with a digital device, it's externalized. It's a way to project outwardly what kind of thoughts are passing through your mind, and it's a way then to begin a, a process of what I like to think of as sifting and sorting, a kind of sifting through the various ideas and impulses and imperatives that continuously assail us to sift through them, to evaluate them, to weigh them, and to sort them into perhaps two simple categories, helpful, unhelpful. Beneficial, unbeneficial. And the more, the more that we're able to do this, the more clarity we will have about how we should act in future circumstances where similar issues arise. So that's what can be very helpful with this idea of keeping a journal, a spiritual journal, because if we write about these uh, insights and these struggles that we have, we 
whether we ever read it again or not, we are actually engaged in the process of sifting uh, through our thoughts and sorting them into the, these two categories of helpful and unhelpful. As Sir John uh, recommends, he says, to write down and continuously revise your personal list of spiritual laws or principles. Um, okay, so um, let's say we do that. We decide, we, we, have, we say, well, I'm going to start doing that tomorrow. And perhaps you get a journal, an old-fashioned uh, book with a pen and a paper, or you use a digital device. And on the first day, you may find that actually you come up with a long list of your own personal laws and principles. Or perhaps you might struggle to put even one down or more than one, maybe two or hard. It's possible that when you really set yourself to work on this task, that it, you really have no clear idea what a spiritual law is or what, what principles or principles should guide your life. This is actually an extraordinary insight to have about oneself. What principles guide my life? What moves me? What's my inner ruler? What is my inner measurement? What's my inner measurement stick? What, how do I judge how I should act? From where do I derive my values and principles? Starts to sound a little bit moralistic and perhaps like old-fashioned religious figures, and in many ways, Sir John was that. And uh, I can honestly say that there's a strong element of that in religion, but it can also be helpful. Where do my values come from? Do I derive them from only from social media, from mass media? Are my role models implicitly or unconsciously just celebrities and just famous people and just wealthy famous people and just successful people? Is that it? Are there not any other role models that we can call upon to help us shape our behavior? So, but one thing I've learned from many years of teaching about these topics is that it's never a good idea to lay down any general rules about what's right or wrong, because there's always somebody who will disagree or feel like they're excluded or say, you've missed my experience altogether. So I will not be laying down any rules, and who am I to lay down rules for anyone in any case? That's why Sir John calls us to journal keeping. It's a form of self-discovery. We discover for ourselves. And if we find that we have no idea, that's why reading a book like this and taking a course like this can serve as a, as a doorway into these ancient repositories of wisdom about how to live fruitful and flourishing lives, the great wisdom traditions of humankind. So, um, and then if, uh, so um, that's a lot to learn in one session. Um, and if we do manage to write some laws down, perhaps the next day we can evaluate our behavior from the preceding day and to see how we lived up to our laws, uh, to, our, to our, our, our spiritual ideals. Now, this process of sifting and sorting, that's my own expression for it, it's fundamental to any serious ethical or spiritual discipline. The Jesuits have the, the practice known as the examine, in which uh, there is a rigorous uh, self-analysis process whereby one every day, every day examines one's behavior to see where one lived up to spiritual ideals and where one did not. Um, uh, and um, uh, we can find, and I'll, as I come to each of these traditions, I'll mention practices uh, in the Hindu, Buddhist, and Jewish and Islamic traditions uh, that are, are similar. And in fact, I will mention one right now that I'm thinking about it here. Uh, in Judaism, uh, excuse me, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in Islam, uh, the mystical tradition of Islam uh, speaks about the examination of inward deeds. In Buddhism, uh, there is a strong stress that's placed upon sila, or ethical conduct. Uh, there's a book called The Path of Purification, and this begins with uh, ethical formation, uh, a kind of sifting through our thoughts to see which thoughts are helpful or not. Um, in the Hindu tradition, the yoga traditions provide us with models on how to do this. The Christian tradition, uh, Jesus is, uh, is, is, says, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. So this process of, of sifting and sorting our inner thoughts and evaluating those which are helpful and unhelpful is a way in which we begin to clear the inner ground so that we can then be capable of engaging in deeper states of contemplation.